Hello everyone, welcome into Above My Pay Grade. My name is Eric, feeling slightly better today. Still in quarantine. This is my second time getting COVID. This time was way worse, um, fortunately. But uh, sent out a video yesterday asking questions. Didn't get a bunch of it, but I did get one from M&J about <laughs> Putin's speech. And um, my take on it. I, I did see the uncut version. And I will say that um, I don't like to give, uh, like, black and white statements on war, because there are some things that, that are true, and the first casualty of war is truth. And so there's a lot of propaganda on both sides. I think Russia has a... If, if we were in the same position as Russia, we might be doing the same thing. Um, all that to say, I think Putin is in a more desperate situation now because they just upped the draft age to 65 in Russia. Um, they have people trying to leave, like all their flights were booked out of Russia. So s seeing as how propaganda shapes battles, um, it's definitely having its effect on Russia. And as this war um, continues and family members are dying of, of Russian soldiers, etc., um, there has to be morale, and that morale has to be from somewhere, whether that be through nationalism or... Um, but if the morale is kind of forced, it's like you will fight for Russia and you will go over there. I mean, that just doesn't last very long um, if people are fighting for their country. Um, out of fear of being killed um, by their country. So I, I do think Russia is getting more desperate. It hasn't gone like they thought it would. Uh, in addition, there's a lot of um, oligarchs who have um, committed suicide, eight in total who have committed suicide. I'll link that story in the description below uh, since this war started. So I don't think it's all this monolithic uh, way of thinking in Russia, and uh, that's why a lot of these oligarchs are committing suicide. But um, if it was in regards to his threat um, of using more powerful weapons, I, I just don't, um, my thought is, probably don't want to <laughs> poke the bear on that one. I mean, that's... Uh, what if you call us bluff? I mean, what, the consequences of that are pretty pretty dire. But I don't like to make uh, sweeping uh, predictions about war or what is even going on. Um, uh, like, who's the good guy and who's the bad guy? Because, uh, like I said, oftentimes in war, the first casualty is the truth. But in regards to what's going on in Russia, um, Europe's feeling it too. Uh, I just read today that Germany is having to nationalize their energy markets. So one of their main importers of energy, you would think they're not making any profit because they cannot import Russian oil. And so the country has to go in and buy them out. And <coughs> this for-profit company is now <laughs> under the control of the government. And as we know, uh, things that are under government control tend to run so smooth. Um, when there's not a profit motive, uh, people just don't work as hard, shall we say. So it was out of desperation because this com com company was going bankrupt because they could not import oil. The same thing's happening in France. Um, one of their nuclear facilities um, is having to be nationalized in France. So as this energy crisis gets worse, <laughs> other things are gonna be affected too. Um, could be grocery stores, um, could be car companies, could be a lot of other things. And um, <laughs> it's not that they, it, it's the, the policies in place that are, that are affecting the profitability. And I think, yes, Russia is a massive is a massive issue here, but really it's the balance sheets of these, of these countries. 
they don't have the wiggle room because when they when we were and America's in the same place when we were living high on the hog and times are good um, we spend more and when times are bad we spend just as much and so we have such massive debt and now keyword inflation they don't have a lot of room to maneuver and um, inject liquidity into their economy because when they inject, inject liquidity it means inflation so their only <laughs> their only solution is just have pain in the economy because if if a if something comes in like Russia is not importing uh, fuel maybe they could spend more from the government from somewhere else but that's just going to cause inflation um, today. Otherwise, in, in other uh, economic circumstances, they might have been able to do that. But today, that is just not the case, uh, especially with the, uh, the dollar being the world reserve currency. It's just not possible. So I think the bigger problem uh, with Russia and the European energy crisis, obviously, there's bad decisions made along the way. But the reason they can't pivot very, very easily <laughs> is they have incredibly bad balance sheets. And so they don't have a lot of wiggle room and they're dealing with inflation. So anytime the government comes in and tries to spend money to help the situation, they're going to have a problem. And just like Jerome Powell said, Jerome Powell said when he raised interest rates yesterday by 0.75, he said, we are going to have to cause pain. He said hey, he wishes there was a way around it, but there's not. And we are going to have to cause pain to um, tamp this inflation down. And... Uh, so Europe's having the same problem. Now they have this energy problem. So that, that, that's just um, not a, a good recipe for success, in my humble opinion. A lot of cross currents around the world. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully my voice clears up in the next couple days. See you guys in the next one. Peace.